Poetry and Prose is sponsored by the National Endowment for the Arts. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Carter, Chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts. For 15 years, the National Endowment for the Arts, along with our partner, the Poetry Foundation, have celebrated the power of words by hosting Poetry Out Loud. Poetry Out Loud is a recitation competition open to high school students nationwide. Poetry Out Loud is a program that helps high school students discover and explore poetry. Some of the poems written hundreds of years before they were born and others by contemporary poets. And here is Adrian Matika, a former literature fellow, a 2014 Pulitzer Prize nominee for poetry and a former Poetry Out Loud judge. One of the things that Poetry Out Loud as a program does is create a really inclusive space um, so if you are a, a student who maybe isn't familiar with poetry, you come in and you have the opportunity to read poets of different uh, cultural communities, different economic circumstances, and to really inhabit those, those words. Poetry Out Loud helps students understand the power of words and gives them an opportunity to find their voice. Each year, our Poetry Out Loud champions share their voice at the National Book Festival. Last year, our national champion and runner-up joined Jericho Brown, a former literature fellow and the 2020 Pulitzer Prize winner for poetry on stage at the festival. My name is Jericho Brown, and I'm going to start by introducing to you the, to the 2019 second place winner, um, who is quite amazing. Uh, I was a judge for this particular competition this year, and when I saw her, um, I remember sitting in the audience and just crying tears. And so I have huge expectations of your emotions today. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Scotland Ballard. I will be reciting Self Help by Michael Ryan. What kind of delusion are you under? The life he hid just knocked you flat. You see the lightning, but not the thunder. What God hath joined, let no man put to sunder. Did God know you'd marry a rat? What kind of delusion are you under? His online persona simply stunned her, as it did you when you started to chat. What kind of delusion are you under? To the victors go the plunder. You should crown them with a baseball bat. What kind of delusion are you under? The kind that causes blunder after blunder. Is there any other kind in that? You see the lightning, but not the thunder. And for one second, the world's a wonder. Just keep it thrilling under your hat. What kind of delusion are you under? You see the lightning, but not the thunder. I told you. And now for our first place winner, Isabella Callery, who's here all the way from Minnesota. Let's give Isabella Callery a hand. ABC Darien, requiring further examination of Anglican Seraphim Subjugation of a Wild Indian Reservation by Natalie Diaz. Angels don't come to the reservation. Bats, maybe. Or owls, boxy, mottled things. Coyotes, too. 
They all mean the same thing. Death. And death eats angels, I guess. Because I haven't seen an angel fly through this valley ever. Gabriel? Never heard of him. Know a guy named Gabe, though. He came through here one powwow and stayed typical Indian. Sure, he had wings. Jailbird that he was. He flies around in stolen cars. Wherever he stops, kids grow like gourds from women's bellies, like I said. No Indian I've ever heard of has ever been or seen an angel. Maybe in a Christmas pageant or something. Nazarene Church holds one every December. Organized by Pastor John's wife. It's no wonder Pastor John's son is the angel. Everyone knows angels are white. Quit bothering with angels, I say. They're no good for Indians. Remember what happened last time some white god came floating across the ocean? Truth is, there may be angels. But if there are angels up there, living on clouds or sitting on thrones across the sea wearing velvet robes and golden rings, drinking whiskey from silver cups, we are better off if they stay rich and fat and ugly and exactly where they are in their own distant heaven, you better hope you never see angels on the res. If you do, they'll be marching you off to Zion or Oklahoma or some other hell they've mapped out for us. Okay, so I want to ask just about those two poems. What was the process that you went through to learn those poems? And before that, I'd like to know, how did you come about those poems? How did you come to, how did you find those particular poems? And why did you choose to learn and recite those poems? Can y'all tell me those, the story of those yeah. poems for you? Okay. Yeah, I mean, for me, I really wanted to look for a native poet, and when I found that poem by Natalie Diaz, it really hit home with me on a lot of things, so I knew I wanted to do that one. And then my process of memorizing is just taking it line by line. Um, memorizing has, is kind of easy for me, as mm -hmm. weird as that sounds. I like to memorize things. Um, but the real fun of it for me is sitting and analyzing it line by line, what words do I want to emphasize? Where do I want my gestures to be? And that's what I had the most fun with. Mm -hmm. Mine was not that complicated. <laughs> um, I found self-help because when I read it, it was sort of in your face in the sense that it was sort of addressing the reader, well, reader, poet, whatever, personally. And I kind of liked it because it was sort of my excuse to be sassy at someone without being sassy at someone. <laughs> and when I found that poem, thanks to Miss Haskins, my uh, honors junior American lit teacher, I started to annotate that poem. Like I printed that poem out at least three times and every single time there were other, like so many things I wrote on the paper, like what does this line mean to me? How can I apply that to my own personal life? What, what does that line do for me and how can I emphasize it in a way that both addresses my feelings toward the audience and the audience understanding them. Well, the national championship for Poetry Out Loud had to be canceled this year due to the pandemic, 
we still had more than 260,000 high school students participate nationwide. Here, we're pleased to share videos of several of our state champions. You can find these and many more at arts.gov. Rondo by Lee Hunt. Jenny kissed me when we met, jumping from the chair she sat in. Time, you thief who love to get sweets into your list. Put that in. Say I'm weary. Say I'm sad. Say that health and wealth have missed me. Say I'm growing old. But add, Jenny kissed me. It Would Be Neat If With The New Year by Jimmy Santiago Baca for Miguel. It would be neat if with the new year I could leave my loneliness behind with the old year. My leathery loneliness, an old pair of work boots, my dog vigorously head shakes back and forth in its jaws. Chews on for hours every day in the front yard, rain, sun, snow, or wind. In bare feet, pondering my poem, I look out my window and see those dirty pair of boots in the yard. But my happiness depends so much on wearing those boots. At the end of my day, while I'm in a chair listening to a Mexican corrido, I stare at my boots, appreciating all the wrong roads we've taken, all the drug and whiskey houses we've visited, and as the Mexican singer wails his pain, I smile at my boots understanding every note in his voice. And strangers, when they see my boots rocking back and forth on my feet, keeping the beat to the song, see how my boots are scuffed, tooth marked, worn sold. I keep wearing them because they fit so good and I need them, especially when I love so hard where I go up those boulder-strewn trails, where flowers crack rocks in their defiant love for the light. On Listening to Your Teacher Take Attendance by Amy Najuka Matatil. Breathe deep, even if it means you wrinkle your nose from the fake lemon antiseptic of the mopped floors and wiped down doorknobs, the freshly soaked necks and armpits. Your teacher means well, even if he butchers your name like he has a bloody sausage casing stuck between his teeth, handprints on his white, sloppy apron. And when everyone turns around to check out your face, no need to flush red and warm. Just picture all the eyes as if your classroom is one big scallop with its dozens of icy blues. And you will remember that winter your family took you to the China Sea, and you sank your face in it to gaze at baby clams and sea stars the size of your outstretched hand. And when all those necks start to crane, try not to forget someone once lathered their bodies, once patted them dry with a fluffy towel after a bath, set out their clothes for the first day of school. Think of their pencil cases from third grade, full of sharp pencils, a pink pearl eraser. 
Think of their handheld pencil sharpener and its tiny blade. The Mortician in San Francisco by Randall Mann. This may sound queer, but in 1985, I held the delicate hands of Dan White. I prepared him for burial. By then, Harvey Milk was made monument. No, myth by the years since he was shot. <laughs> I remember when Harvey was shot, 20, and I knew I was queer. <laughs> Those were the years. Levi's and leather jackets, holding hands on Castro Street, cheering for Harvey Milk, elected on the same day as Dan White. I often wonder about Supervisor White, who fatally shot Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Milk, who was one of us, a Castro queer. May 21st, 1979, a jury hands down the sentence. Seven years, in truth, Five years for ex-cop, ex-fireman Dan White, for the blood on his hands when he confessed that he had shot the mayor and the queer. A few men in blue cheered. And Harvey Milk. <laughs> Why cry over spilled milk, some wondered. Semi-privately, for years. It meant one less queer. The jurors turned to White. If just the mayor had been shot, Dan might have had trouble on his hands. But the 12 who held his life in their hands maybe didn't mind the death of Harvey Milk, maybe. The second murder offered him a shot at serving only a few years. In the end, he committed suicide, this Dan White. And he was made presentable by a queer. Because it has no pure products. Because the Pacific Ocean sweeps along the coastline because the water of the ocean is cold. And because land is better than ocean. Because I say we rather than they. Because I live in California. I have eaten fresh artichokes and jacaranda bloom in April and May because my senses have caught up with my body. My breath with the air, it swallows my hunger with my mouth. Because I walk barefoot in my house. Because I have nursed my son at my breast because he is a strong American boy. Because I have seen his eyes redden when he is asked who he is because he answers, I don't know. Because to have a son is to have a country. Because my son will bury me here because countries are in our blood and we bleed them. Because it is late and too late to change my mind. Because it is time. We hope high school students nationwide will participate in the Poetry Out Loud program during the 2021 school year.